I think um, life was not not easy, not easy for him. He had visions of things he wanted to do, perhaps of relationships he would like to have. But getting there was something else, was something else. I'm sure that he sensed that things were not going well. And I think he became increasingly paranoid, which only made matters worse, of course. On one hand, my husband, who was just as charming as Glenn, was trying to woo me back. And at the same time, Glenn, as I said, was becoming less and less of the Glenn that I had fallen in love with. Also, I had my children to consider, and uh, it was a very difficult decision, but I finally decided that I really had to leave, um, and did so with great regret. All I remember is being upset already then, you know, feeling I was now forsaking Glenn instead of the other way around. When we, when we had arrived, I felt we were forsaking my dad, and now we're going back to my dad's thrilled about that, but still had real qualms. And so I was, I just remember being um, kind of in shock. But also sort of saying, you know what, this is for the best. It's for the best. I don't know how a child knows it, but they, 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 want, they want their whole family together. They, I really did. So I was very happy when we moved back with my father, except that confusing again for a ch child who gains something and loses something at the same time and doesn't quite know how to deal with that because we certainly didn't see um, Glenn very much after that uh, and and that was a, I was sad about that and I missed him and I didn't understand I remember one sort of farewell meeting he came to New York to see us in this hotel room which I think was the Essex house Already some of the intimacy had been broken, so everybody was a bit shy. And it was awkward. You know, I remember that nobody could really say what they felt. I had a strong feeling that this was a goodbye for all of us. In all of Gould's private papers that have survived, I've only found one document that actually explicitly um, contained any material dealing with Cornelia Foss. And one of those is a page long record, which makes rather pitiable reading of his efforts to call her and either getting the maid or getting the daughter or getting the husband and being told she'll call you right back and then she doesn't. It records his frustration at trying to get her on the phone. And then some pages later in the same document, he's talking about why should I maintain this relationship? And he's sort of asking himself, what are the reasons for maintaining it? What are the reasons for ending it? What are the reasons for doing nothing and keeping the status quo? It's unusually open and confessional. You don't often find Gould on paper in that mood. But beyond these two very late documents, their relationship is completely undocumented in his papers. <laughs> 